So today I want to talk about improving your business. And uh, there'll be a little summary, but not very big, on the SUI and CMMI. And then a little bit about the uh, what typically you get out of being level 2 and level 3, or having any process uh, framework implemented. And then the majority, majority will be talking about uh, tying the use of frameworks and standards to business needs, uh, because that's often a common blind spot or a, a challenge for some organizations. Uh, I'll also talk about uh, the behavior change versus process change and the training expectations, at least at level two and level three, uh, because often those are uh, blind spots or weak areas uh, in implementation. Uh, then a very brief summary of services and acquisition, if you haven't seen those before, and then a relation to other frameworks, uh, such as ISO 9001, Six Sigma, and Lean. So the first comment I'd make is about how people define uh, process improvement. And when you look at a lot of organizations, they typically define it uh, as documentation, compliance, or just documenting what we do. And when the definition becomes that, that becomes the message and the goal. And so I think one of the issues here is that if the process improvement program doesn't have a good definition at the beginning and a good message, uh, then it can be seen as a tax to the organization, as a, a hurdle to jump through and a step to kind of overachieve, uh, but no particular benefit to either the engineers, the staff, or the managers. So the first comment I'd make is, is that if you know that in your organization uh, process improvement is defined or seen as documentation compliance or just documenting what you do, uh, then that could be some of the causes behind uh, people's lack of willingness to either put it in good, good uh, practice or I'll get some benefit out of that. Uh, on the right-hand side, I have a uh, refined kind of version. Uh, I think of process improvement as problem solving, uh, improving the performance of the group, and sustaining the gains, being able to uh, maintain the gains that have been put in place and keep those going uh, year after year. And when we discuss problem solving, examples could be fixing a crisis in the organization, uh, could be a, a quality crisis or a schedule crisis, or a budget crisis, uh, high development costs overall, unhappy customers, and then typically when these problems are, are addressed uh, through improvement, uh, we also aim at particular goals like new business, increased volume, and reduced costs. So process improvement is the journey between fixing a problem and achieving a goal, and it is less about uh, the top left-hand uh, bullets there. So a little uh, summary of SCI, uh, for people unfamiliar, it is a group based at Carnegie Mellon, uh, mostly funded by uh, commercial licenses, royalties uh, from their partners, established in 86. And when it was first established, it was about uh, improving the state of the practice of software in the US. Um, not the state of the art, but the state of how people actually do it. But now, uh, 25, 26 years later, uh, that's really a set of concepts uh, that are widely used now in both commercial and government organizations around the globe, uh, both systems development, software, IT, hardware, services, and acquisition. Now, you may have seen this picture of the model, uh, so I won't go through every section of it, uh, but I'm just going to briefly talk about some of the, uh, the purposes of these activities and uh, what the overall result should be uh, from a benefit, benefit perspective. So obviously at level one, there are no criteria. Everybody qualifies to be level one. Uh, but at level two, uh, they, those seven process areas are really about basic project management. And the way I see that is that it's about being able to allocate time for activities, uh, both scheduling and the resourcing of activities in the project, and also about being able to uh, deal with change. Uh, when a change occurs, uh, for example, <coughs> Um, a, a scope change or a platform change or a, a bug change or a design change, uh, being able to take that change request and actually manage it in a way that doesn't uh, cause major problems to the project. And uh, so those activities are fairly basic, uh, but also very useful uh, to get a team's arms around its work, uh, kind of figure out who's going to do what and communicate that. On the far right-hand side of the picture is the comments about risk and rework and then towards the top right, uh, quality and productivity. 
And I see these as the acid test uh, for whether the process areas or the model are being used correctly. That is that if the process areas are being used and there's no impact or benefit uh, from a risk reduction standpoint or a rework reduction standpoint, then there's probably a bit of a, a problem in how uh, the process areas are being implemented. They could be either too academic or uh, too verbose or are not particularly well uh, utilized. Um, but if you use those process areas in the middle uh, well uh, to benefit, uh, then you should see a, a reduction in risk and a reduction in rework. A risk could be a technical surprise or a schedule surprise uh, to the organization. I see that level three is, I know the, the word they have in the focus column there is process standardization. And although that is true, that's a kind of a part of level three, I don't see it as level three being that is the focus. Uh, I put a little comment there myself uh, called the world, world class brand. Uh, when I see companies that get to level three, uh, I see them as a world class brand. They, they engineer the product or the system or the IT solution to actually work correctly. Um, and they do that by using the first five process areas in that first list, uh, requirements development through uh, the product integration. Those process areas are really practices they absorb and use uh, to really think through and engineer the solution or the product and actually make it work with lower uh, defects, higher quality, and uh, more efficiently uh, to arrive at that point. And so they do these things at level three, not for documentation perspective or just to uh, be compliant to the model. Uh, they do it to really engineer the product, and they end up with things that you and I would like to either use or buy, uh, things that really have a brand to them uh, in the marketplace. Now, the middle two about level three <coughs> are really extensions to uh, what we start out at level two, uh, so the project management and risk management in the middle of the level three cluster are really extensions to uh, the planning and management and risk management that we actually do at level two. And then the, uh, the ones with the word organizational, uh, they are really about how the organization improves. So one comment I'd make about this is that I've actually heard and seen some organizations uh, that work towards level three, and they don't like the process stuff they put in place. And my comment is that level three is about liking it. It's about if you don't like it, then it gets fixed. That those process areas are about organizational learning, such that if you found a process or a template or a, a way you did something like planning or a life cycle or testing, and you found it cumbersome or difficult to do or not particularly effective, uh, those process areas are about uh, identifying what is not working, uh, fixing, and then deploying that, that particular skill or solution across the organization. So uh, being level three is not about compliance. It's about really uh, refining the implementation and deploying those lessons across the group so people can benefit from that. So at level three, it's really about being becoming world class and, and being, a, being a very proficient, um, uh, high-skilled uh, group uh, to pull off uh, solutions and products and development. And then level four is a fairly significant uh, shift towards statistical thinking, uh, both statistical prediction and uh, statistical control. And again, on the far right-hand side, at all levels, at all practices being employed, there should be a noticeable uh, risk, a reduction in risk rework and improvement in quality and productivity. By no means does that actually occur just at level, level three to level four or four to five. That occurs throughout uh, from level one up to uh, level five. So a couple of comments about uh, level one um, and kind of where people uh, typically are at that point. Uh, level one is operating without any particular defined how-tos, uh, how to estimate, how to uh, do version control, how to do risk management, how to schedule, and how to do some QA checks. Uh, there's no how-tos defined, or if there are, uh, they're not particularly well utilized. And also, uh, things like